Have you ever asked yourself how many planets there are? It's a question that scientists ask all the time. Normally when we ask people, they tell us eight or nine. But usually they're only just thinking about our own solar system. Mercury, Venus, Earth and Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune. These are all planets that go around our sun, but our sun is only one star of billions. When we look at the sky, the night sky, every single point of light we can see is another star, just like our sun, which may have other solar systems going around it. Could we find these? Could we actually see them in the night sky? Well, it turns out that it's very hard to do. The planets are very faint compared to their parent stars. In fact, even our normal solar system, and near Saturn, it's very hard to spot our own planet Earth. Can you see it in this image? We have to zoom in quite far to be able to pick it out. But it turns out we might not actually need to see the planet to tell us there. Every time a planet passes in front of the stars going around, it's going to block out a tiny part of that star's light. It's only about one part in a hundred, which means it's about the same as a fly flying in front of the headlamp of a car. But as it goes around, we would see the star getting a little bit dimmer, and a little bit brighter, and a little bit dimmer, every single time the planet passed in front of it. This is exactly what scientists at St Andrews University are looking for. Using a telescope in the Canary Islands, they're staring at the sky night upon night looking for this subtle dimming and brightening of the stars. The telescope's called SuperWASP, it's an amazing piece of equipment which is constantly looking at the night sky. NASA as well are doing something similar. Using a satellite in space called Kepler, they're staring at a region around a constellation known as Cygnus. Within this region, they'll be able to stare at thousands of stars and again look for this subtle dimming and brightening of planets. Kepler hopes to find thousands, if not tens of thousands of planets over the next three years, so keep your eyes on the news to see what it finds. It's not just pointing at any random part of the sky, however. Kepler's been specifically chosen to look at a part of our galaxy where we think there might be life. Too close to the centre of the galaxy and it's very violent for life, too far away, and we don't think we can really make planets very well. So, you can see our sun, and the yellow triangle shows where Kepler will be looking, trying to find planets with life in them. It's not the only criteria for life, though. We need liquid water, really, to have life. If we're too close to a star, that liquid water becomes steam. If we're too far away, it becomes ice. The Goldilocks region, you can see here in green, tells us where we can probably find life in planets. The larger a star, the larger, the further away the Goldilocks region is, the smaller the star, the closer in it is. So let me ask again, how many planets are there? Whereas well, of recording this, there are 442 planets that we know about going around other stars. That makes 450 in total. That number is only going to continue to rise, however, as we get better with this. And within 20 years, we hope to have found a planet much like our own Earth.